take a look at this. It's uh, uh, the Daily Mail's piece today, No Love Lost, and the subject says first Terry is snubbed in handshake row, and then it talks about the diving antics of uh, John Terry during the match in play. Also the back page of uh, the Daily Express, much more hard-hitting. Friend of the show, Mick Dennis, saying so much for respect. And a line from here, it says, uh, football got back to business, obviously, after the international break, and should be ashamed. And he was referring to a section, I must say a small section of the Manchester United support. Uh, but after everything that happened last week, they were still insulting fans of Liverpool over the Hillsborough disaster. A very, very poor state of affairs. And um, I'm very pleased to say that we have uh, uh, some uh, civility and some sensibility in the form of the chief executive of the PFA, Gordon Taylor, uh, to give his view. Good evening, Gordon. Good evening, everybody. Uh, now, Gordon, you're, you're talking to myself, Flash Gordon Watson, and Chief uh, Correspondent of Goal.com, Wayne Veazey. And your initial reaction, uh, first of all, to the handshake or non-handshake, as it may, may well be. I just felt it's um, at the moment... You know, the game focused in the weight really of the Olympics when there was such a good example of in inclusion and uplift with the whole nation, uh, both the Olympics and the Paralympics, ensuring the ability of sport to pull people together, uh, irrespective of background and different physical ability, of course. And I just felt that football had a really a duty to follow in that theme we have no divine right to be the major spectator sport or participant sport and you need to deserve that and i just felt that it's been particularly in the week following the hillsborough report where those families who'd suffered had waited so long to get what they felt was the truth and to try and obtain justice when you know, they'd waited so long for that and there'd been a cover-up. And it was footballers' jobs, really, to try and set the right example on the field of play and hope not to create tension that then would, you know, emanate to the crowd, but to set the right example. This is just a... This is a protocol. It's a respect matter. You, you're on the field with young mascots. You want to be able to say this is a sport above all. You want to shake hands with your opponent ideally before the game and after the game, and then in the why? middle of the pitch, which is very why, traditional with the why, referee, why, Gordon, why do they have to shake hands before the game? Because if they don't shake hands, it just gets magnified so much. I mean, how long has we, we been shaking hands prior to the game? I think I agree after the game that you, you kick lumps out of each other, you have a mutual respect, you are a sportsman, and you shake hands after the game. Win, lose, or draw. Yeah, but but, but see, why do you shake hands Gordon, prior to the game? But, but I'm with I'm with Gordon was, on this. I'm with was, you. Uh, I'm with you, Gordon, on this. This was I something think... that was a, this was something that was agreed with the owners of clubs, chief executives, managers, and players. Some time ago, in the way they do it with the Champions League, just to try and and uh, it's part of the respect campaign, particularly involving uh, referees and behaviour uh, when. In one or two cases, you know, of bad behaviour, and looking to try and make sure we emphasise the sporting element of the game, and to try and set the best example to those youngsters playing in schools, the next generation Gordon, playing on the park. Pitches. Gordon, Gordon, I'm absolutely with you, and I, and I think you're absolutely right. And I, uh, uh, I, I was with some family yesterday, and 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 I, my my six-year-old niece started describing what she had seen at Loftus Road on Saturday. She knows nothing about football, uh, but she was able to describe it. And I used to think when I watched football that it was a bit of a cliche when we always say, about, we talk about the impact something like that could have on kids. But if you have, but an individual, if you have a young child who yes, sees that, right. then they are clearly impressionable. And so what Gordon's saying is absolutely right. Put it all behind you and shake hands and move on. Well, so, so you're asking him to show respect by shaking the hands on someone that he believes, this individual, being Anton Ferdinand, has been disrespected nationwide. Listen, Arsene Wenger no, shakes I, I hands... If with... I could just come in there, I wanted to make the point that this is not a personal thing, this is a professional thing exactly. for the image of football. I didn't want football to be used as a stage 
to reiterate some personal problem between yes. two different players. I feel the game is bigger than that, yes. and there is a duty to the game from all players. And that's what's concerning about that, that if two players, no matter what, can't be part of that, and then that tension has happened once you had the captain not shaking hands, suddenly you had a tension in the crowd, and suddenly we've got people believing that it's right to be so tribal and almost vindictive to the opposition and suddenly we've got the Manchester United Liverpool game coming up this weekend I mentioned Hillsborough before we want to get rid of the champs about Munich and about Hillsborough and it's just the players not setting that right example it it's, keeps digging up things that have festered for a long time now Gordon, had the advice of the PFA been sought by um, either QPR or Chelsea before the match? on Saturday in terms of the handshake? We've spoken parties for a long time now and I'm speaking with Richard Scudamore of the Premier League tomorrow and I feel this really, I, I hear what's being said and that we might as well have stopped the handshake. I would think that they're running away from something that was put in there for the right reasons but it does not need in the same way as I mentioned before that everybody in the game buys into it. If they want to buy out of it now then that's up to them and it's mm. a democratic process. But I think that would be a sad day for football and send out the wrong message. I think you're absolutely right, Gordon. I think that for the sake of four players, what about all the other players up and down the country who do want to show respect to their colleagues, who do want to show respect for their peers and who do want to set the right example? We should not cop out of this because it's uncomfortable to look at or it's uncomfortable to see. I think that we should continue to try and set the right example. And everybody who says scrap it are saying so because they don't want to face up to the fact that it might not be pretty to watch. Well, I, well I, you've just heard, uh, obviously, the top man of the whole of the PFA, Gordon Taylor, say it's a democratic vote. I tell you now, if you voted, I, I speak to many, many, many footballers, and for every one of them, would say they're happy to shake their hand afterwards, even if it's the biggest villain or enemy, because that's what we do. We are sportsmen, and you're in a battle. But for the handshake prior... That it only magnifies if there's any problems. I because as soon as one person doesn't shake a hand, it becomes an issue. Gordon, can I ask you, is your your, your talks with Richard Skidder tomorrow... Is it tomorrow? Can is I that just say, though, and I respect, obviously, what you say, but when you see the sort of build-up you get to some sports, like with boxing, when it is actually in the ring and it's the real thing, and they would be expected to equivalent to shake hands, touch gloves... I can think of no end of sports where that's done both at the beginning and at the end, and I see nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I, th I think you're absolutely right, Gordon. I, I, I see nothing wrong. You look at all sorts of sports, and what, regardless of what has passed previously, um, and even before they go into the ring with boxers, you know, there may have been bad blood in press conferences or whatever else. They touch gloves, they signify respect for each other. And you look at the likes of Arsene Wenger and Tony Pulis and all sorts of managers up and down the country who we know do not like each other. They shake hands before and after a match because it's a sign of oh, respect. Oh, there's so many that don't shake hands before. Don't get me wrong here. I, I am one million percent behind the shaking of an opponent's hand at the end of a contest. Prior to it, I just think it, I'm going to say it again, yeah, it magnifies an issue if someone doesn't decide to do it. You know, it's not forceful. You don't have to do it. And the individual who didn't decide to shake the hands this week, what about the um, Queensport Rangers captain? He, he didn't shake the hands of the Chelsea captain. Yeah, well, that's his choice. If people choose not to do it, right. fair enough. But every single day, we all shake the hands of people who we might not hold in the highest regard, right. but we do it because it's a sign of respect. Well, some do. Really, when, it gets to, when it gets to a captain in the middle of the field, oh, oh, everybody looking, he's there with the young mascot, you're expected to shake the hands of the referee, uh, the same acknowledging the assistants, we're all in this game together. It's a professional thing and a duty to the game. It's not the time to be showing any personal things to the opponent. The game's got to be bigger than that. So, Gordon, what resolution are you seeking with Richard Scudamore tomorrow, then? What are you hoping to achieve? Well, I'm looking uh, that we either run away from this or we reiterate the point that I've tried to put forward but it does need uh, signing into from the owners, managers, chief executives and players. If that's possible to do that, I'll be pleased for it to continue. If not, uh, it would be against my wishes, but we would revert to where we were before. But I think that would be a backward step for the game, for, for sportsmanship.
Uh, now, Gordon, obviously we've got Liverpool, Manchester United this weekend, uh, and I know, uh, as you know, you, you're intimating, you know, you've been sending out the right messages and talking on the TV about how all of us, not just players, but media fans, should conduct ourselves. But are you fearful of what we may see at the weekend? There is always a, a, an element of people intent on wrecking it for everyone else. After I've lived through the bad days of the 80s when there was massive problems with bad behaviour and safety and had the government that was looking to really close down the game and to, if not that, you'd need an ID card to even get into a football ground. I've seen how bad it, the game could be and I've seen a marvellous turnaround with all seaters teams, community programmes, females attending games, youngsters attending games. So. We've got two of the biggest clubs in the world, and I, w I would hope that in being two of the biggest clubs, they're also two of the strongest clubs and with a feeling for the past and a, a respect for the past. And I know there's great rivalry between Liverpool and Manchester United, but they have both equally suffered disasters, and I hope they could just sympathise with each other and cut out that vitriol uh, about... Munich and about Hillsborough, it does them no good, the club's no good and the supporters no good. Gordon Taylor, Chief Executive of the PFA, thank you very much indeed for joining us on the Monday Light Live show. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, Gordon. Uh, Gordon Taylor uh, with his thoughts on what is obviously a very incendiary issue. Uh, the chaps here in the studio have their feelings. And uh, the questions you were asking about his meeting with mm. Richard Scudamore, they should be very instructive tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fascinating. I mean, Gordon's just, bit, just been telling us that um, this, the result of this meeting tomorrow could be no more handshakes. Mm. Handshakes over. If that's what Richard Scudamore's going to push for, then um, Gordon says, yeah, he's going to accept it. We, which know where which very we know where Gordon stands. Where do you stand? Um, I agree with Gordon, actually. I think, I should, I think it should be after, after the match. I, I, pl I play club, club cricket, a very low amateur standard. Um, we don't shake hands beforehand, we shake hands afterwards. Whatever happens on the field, you know, you, some people you get on with, some people you don't, but you always shake hands afterwards. I don't think they need to shake hands. Beforehand. I 